Hey guys, this is Surya from Skilling. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to our career series. In part one of five ways to become a design engineer, I spoke about the different aspects of design engineering that you should know in order to kind of become a design engineer. In this part, I'll basically walk you through what are the steps that you need to do in order to have a successful design engineering career. Right? To recap, five master courses that we have in design are these uh, six. Uh, design Engineers Master Program, Automotive Design, Complete Passenger Car Design, uh, Manufacturing Design, BAW Fixture Design and Plastics, uh, SolidWorks Design and Analysis. Right? Okay, so kind of going to today's video. How can you learn these skills? As I said in the previous video, understand the fundamentals. Right? Does not matter what software you use, but it always matters what are the fundamentals and the fundamental principle for designing lighting system, seating system, BAW fixtures, mold design, what not. You need to understand the fundamentals, you need to understand uh, solid modeling, surface, sheet metal and then graduate up. So if you already know solid surface sheet metal, you can directly graduate to seating, lighting, BAWs, uh, wiring hardness and what not. Right? So that's the first step. The second one is all of you might have heard before, practice makes man perfect. Perfect practice makes man perfect enough, right? So you need to spend at least thousand hours. Thousand hours might sound a lot, but thousand hours is just you spending one year learning design, right? That too in part time, right? So probably two to three hours every day or two hours uh, during your day, weekdays and probably four hours during your weekends. And, and if you want to, and, and you need to definitely spend that much time if you want to get better at that. If you do not want a design engineering career, don't do that. But if you want a design engineering career, you need to do that because in these thousand hours, you will work on multiple projects. So why is it important to work on real time projects? A lot of you watching this video will be freshers. A lot of you watching this video might be people who want to change domains. A lot of you watching this video might be a design engineer, but want to get into a different design engineering domain, right? each and every one of you irrespective of which stage of the career you are in you need to showcase to the potential recruiter that you have worked on multiple projects before now the most common question is hey i do not have a job how do i get that industry experience that people are asking for when i recruit you're partially right but always there is a workaround right so there are industry oriented projects that people can work on even if they are not working in an industry right very simple so in a skill link master course there is at least uh, 20 industry oriented projects that people work on right so those are the advantages that you need to kind of take a look into and develop your portfolio so yeah uh, the second step is practice at least thousand plus hours right or uh, third step work on real life projects so that's very important at least 10 real life projects the fourth step build a portfolio you need to have a portfolio that you can basically send to your recruiter so that they can take a look at your project and understand what you as an individual have worked upon. Because think about it, I graduated out of undergrad in 2011. I had around 200 mechanical engineers in my class and everybody in their resume had AutoCAD, SOLIDWORKS, CREO, nobody knew anything about it, but it's just free that everybody kind of paste those names in, in, in the resume, even if they've just drawn a line in their lab class. The recruiters kind of find it really, really difficult to choose the right candidate in Nokri or any other job platform. So you need to kind of create your unique portfolio to showcase to the recruiters that you have spent so much amount of time. So that is one of the most important things that you need to do. And this is also important if you do not have a great GPA, because there is always a mentality that someone with a high GPA does really well, right? And that's how resumes get picked up. So if you do not have a high GPA, the only way that you can kind of stand out is by creating a great portfolio. The next one is to how to approach the job market. I'm, I'm going to take few different steps in this how to approach the job market stuff right i'm going to think you're a fresher right i'm going to think you're a fresher and i'm going to be very open about how you need to go about it so if you're a beginner once you have a portfolio right once you have done this thousand hours of work once you have a 10 plus industry oriented projects you need to apply to jobs aggressively what do i mean by aggressively apply for jobs when i say aggressively it means at least 100 job applications the word that you need to take into account is at least. It can go from 100 to 1000, you never know. At the end of the day, it is a funnel, right? Think about a funnel, right? Uh, the funnel is like this, 
uh, on the top of the funnel, you are applying for a lot of jobs. There are people who are not taking a look at your profile. There are people who think your profile does not suit their role. And there are people who think your profile is suitable. So if you think about a funnel, if you apply for 100 jobs, you get five interviews. If you have done your practice well, in just five interviews, you will get one select. From our experience, what we have seen is 40 job applications gets you anywhere between six to eight interviews and one full time job. Right. So that's what our experience has been. So uh, that's why I say 100 jobs. Right. Uh, then the other thing you need to do is use LinkedIn. You need to use LinkedIn. I'll say why. Right. So LinkedIn basically has a particular algorithm. What does LinkedIn do? LinkedIn shows your projects to all your network, people who are connected to you. And if they like your uh, if they like your project, it will show to all their network as well. Say, for example, I have 10,000 followers. If you are Yasser, right? And if you have a project and if you are in my connection and if I like the, your project, then I am basically showcasing your project to around 10,000 people in my connection. And if somebody kind of likes that, then they are showing in their connection. So that's the advantage of LinkedIn. The algorithm is in such a way that it shows to a lot of people. So what you need to do is very simple. I'll give you the recipe as well, right? You need to first connect to 500 plus engineering managers and HRs in the companies that you want to work at. Very simple, 500 plus connections in LinkedIn, right? Once you have that, start publishing your projects on LinkedIn. This is where the algorithm that I spoke about comes into play. Once you start publishing projects, you have 500 connections in their network uh, who are engineering managers. They start seeing your projects. They like you, their connections start seeing your project. Very, very simple. And once somebody likes your project, reach out to them on personal message and say, hey, thanks for liking. Here's my portfolio. Do take a look at it, right? And over a period of time, ask for advice. Once he or she uh, provides advice, then say, hey, I'm looking out for a job. Can you provide me? Uh, is there any opportunity available in your company? And this is my portfolio. So these are multiple ways that you can basically approach LinkedIn. If you're a beginner, I'm going to be very practical, right? If you're a beginner in tier two or a tier three college, you have 60 to 70 percentage or six to seven GPA, but you have done all this work. You have done all this work. You can easily expect anywhere between 2.4 to 3 lakh package. If you're a fresher, you've worked on 10 plus industry projects, 1000 plus hours you have spent, and you're basically uh, doing this LinkedIn thing. You can expect anywhere between 2.4 to 3 lakh minimum, right? So, and usually it would be in a tier one, tier two, or a tier three supplier. What is a supplier, right? Uh, there is a OEMs. OEMs are your original equipment manufacturers. So Mercedes Benz is an OEM. Tata Motors is an OEM, right? So tier one suppliers might be anyone like India Pistons who provide pistons to the OEM. Tier two supplier can be like Rane, Talbros or whatnot. Like there are multiple tier two and tier three suppliers, right? So these companies hire at a lower base pay but have really good work for these individuals. They basically ask you to spend around 10 to 12 hours, but that is where you spend that time and learn a lot about design engineering, have a lot of industry experience. Once you get that industry experience and say in two plus years of experience, you will learn essential skills by working hard, right? Uh, in the third year, you can basically jump to an OEM. You can expect anywhere. If you have done really well in the previous company, if you're understood design really really well you can expect anywhere between four to six lakh as a package right and and uh, as you go get into the oem specialize in a domain you will build a very very strong career right uh, this is true we have seen a lot of students do this right we have seen we have at least spoke to 180 to 220 experts in design and they all agree that this is how uh, it works right if you are someone who is already in the two year to three year experience and want to kind of do that, just uh, do these things and kind of uh, come here to step three. That that can happen as well. So yeah, this is this is what I wanted to kind of uh, discuss today. Hope it makes sense. And if you have any questions, please let us know. And uh, all of these things are our learnings. We have run Skilllink over the last three to four years and we have iterated at every step to understand how to make sure 
people who take up our master's courses in design end up in a really good job. And all of these we have implemented and succeeded us. There are more links on the description. Take a look at the description. Subscribe to our channel to have more videos like this. I'll also be making videos on how portfolios should be, what kind of projects you, you will be working on, and what are the detailed aspects of each of the courses that I spoke to you just now. So yeah, uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, looking forward to you in one of our courses. Thank you so much.